I think we should just go ahead and start. If you're really into the Muse and you're thinking about getting a rotary, this is video for you. Or if you have a rotary and just want to see how it is set up, how we set it up. Right. Uh, and with cool. the Muse specifically, it's not just the rotary attachment. You need the riser as well. And riser we go over how well. to install that as well. I think we have a very handsome gentleman who shows us how to do it. So let's check it out. Well, here we go. So here we go. Pretty simple, starting off. So we're talking over this one. We are talking over this All one. All right. So as I said, handsome gentleman. <clears throat> now taking out that honeycomb, you got to kind of twist it, pull it sideways. Fits in there pretty good. but Yeah, it's yeah. really snug. So yeah, make sure you don't uh, bang the, um, the head. Now typically, if you're not as strong as the gorilla-like strength Tim has, <laughs> then you have a friend help you set this up. Uh, but set it up on its side, and you're going to remove these screws. Right. Very straightforward, 2.5 millimeter uh, hex, and you just, you know, you go at it. And the if cool thing is, is this removable floor um, isn't specifically just for the rotary. You can t t use that to your advantage and set it on oh, yeah, the floor yeah. like the if riser. you want to engrave. Yeah, if you want to engrave the floor. We are the only laser patent, patented to have a removable floor. That's right. Pretty cool. So yeah, like Tim was saying, you can put it on a tabletop and engrave the tabletop or a car hood. Hmm. So Tim and I were talking about doing his car hood by uh, taking off the floor right there. Now we got the, ro uh, the riser and, you know, just to show somebody else using it, you got, you know, there you go. Oh, you got it. Team lift. Team lift. And put it on top. There's little holes for the feet to go into. Also, another reason this was a little bit awkward in the video specifically is because we had everything hooked up. The, the chiller or the cool box was hooked up, mm. and we didn't want to drain it before then, so it can make it a little more um, awkward to move when you have the, the hoses coming out of the back. Yeah. But still relatively still do easy. It. It's... It's pretty easy. Now we're going to set up and hook up the rotary. That's right. Now, if, <laughs> if you have an older rotary setup, it doesn't have the registration, but the newer rotary do, uh, riser does. Yeah, so it's a nice little like square piece of metal that you line it up with. And you just see in just a second. There you go. Older ones don't have that. Again, the newer ones do. And the new ones have a place to put your actual um, honeycomb on top if you're not using it. But just, you know, plug and play. And then you make your adjustments on the rotary attachment after you get your cup, mug, cylinder, whatever it may be on to the rotary itself. Go to the peak of that crest, and that's where you're going to want to engrave. And here we're doing an autofocus because we are using the Muse 3D. Yep, autofocus, a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And if you have a keen eye, you <laughs> can see <laughs> we <coughs> did a test run that uh, didn't go so well. But uh, Yeah, we were going to test it with the lid, you know, without the magnet, but the magnet was on there. So yep. that, uh, that happened. Yep. It actually ended up looking like, you know, yeah, Harry Potter's his, his lightning bolt scar. That's that was on purpose. Yeah, totally. It was 100% intentional. So we did this design because Tim's like, it's green. So, slithering. Well, I mean, you wanted to do Oscar the Grouch because I love green. the Muppets. <laughs> First of all, he's not a Muppet. Yeah, he, he's from no, Jim he's Henson. Not. He's the same, same guy. I think Jim Henson did the voice for him. I don't think that makes him a Muppet, though. Same thing. He's a puppet. Like Muppets were in Sesame Street. They, exactly. But not all Sesame Street puppets were Muppets. That That is so inaccurate. <laughs> so there we go. Rotary uh, install there. Well, actually, we saw the engraving, right? We did. Of the, but we didn't, we didn't show the software part, so I think we should jump into the software. And 
we're back. We're back. Right before that, uh, Kurt asks, so the fiber laser is lasing through the paint? Are you not using Surmark? So with a t traditional CO2 laser, you don't need Surmark to blast through powder coating or paint. Right. So it's just a normal CO2 laser, like the old Muse, it's just got the autofocus head. Right. However, if you are doing just a metal tumbler, you would need something like Surmark. Surmark or the fiber laser. That too. So we're in the software right now, and we are going to drag and drop our design. We always say it's just PDF. That is the native format of RE3, and it just it's the best. It's a superior file format. Uh, doesn't save unwanted data. Um, let's zoom out of here. Where is this guy? Last time I uploaded it was like way off over here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, last time it's that just, happened. Just hanging out. Illustrator files, man, I swear. It's not an Illustrator. It's, well, I mean, it wasn't Illustrator. It was. File, it was, too. I've never had that issue. Hmm. So I think it's user error. Probably. <laughs> <coughs> Laser expert problems. So we're only going to engrave this. Once again, if you're in, doing engravings, you go to your um, layer section and delete. Where's the, or we can just hit the little can right here. That means throw it in the trash. There you go. Now you just got that. Now you just sandwich. have your engraving. Um, now, if this was just like a rasterized image beforehand, it probably would have come in without vector data to begin with. But yes. that's typically how I do it when I make uh, designs, is I keep the vector data so I can scale it as much as I like beforehand. And then once it's in RE3, then well, I'll get rid of it. Very true. So if it was just a JPEG, you wouldn't have vector data. Exactly. Uh, so since we're doing the rotary, we have the rotary set up. <coughs> we're going to spin this 90 degrees. Now, at first, it kind of doesn't make sense, but it does. The cup is sitting this way. Right. Right? Uh, I see that the black and white threshold I'm going to play with because I don't want too much of it getting picked up because there are some high details right here in the face. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to lower the threshold a bit. I don't want it too blown out. Eh, I think that looks pretty good. So less of it's going to go get picked up, and the threshold works like so. But I like it right about here. Now we are going to go to the settings. Settings. All righty. And we are going to laser. <coughs> Actually, we're going to go to rotary, my bad. And the friction type is the only type of rotary that you can use with the Muse. So we're going to have that. We're going to keep the default steps. And the rotary is enabled because we just did that right. file. But if you're not enabled, it will be disabled. Just enable it and then save your changes. Now it's ready to be engraved. And that's how you set up the software before you actually start the engraving. And all you have to do is run the perimeter, check your job, make sure that there's no slipping. Right. And you can do that by, you know, jogging it back and forth, making sure that yeah. when the cup rotates, it's not going to slip off the wheel. There. It actually rotates nicely. <clears throat> if it starts to rotate and falls off, you need to make your adjustments on this kind of leveling on the back end of the rotary itself. Right. And if an uh, item is too light, it won't actually spin on the rotary. So as simple as shoving, we shoved like a heavy leather glove in there. Yeah. So a little tip, make it heavy inside of the actual object. Sometimes I use a bean bag. I didn't have that, so I just shoved a glove. I've also there. seen people use ball bearings. Ball bearings work. <coughs> I can imagine that being noisy possibly. Yeah. So what was the outcome? How did it look? But you're not Slytherin, right? I'm not. Hufflepuff for life, bro. Buffle. I'll be Buffle Tough. <laughs> Here, <laughs> you want to get it a little bit closer to the camera there. There we oh, go. Oh, my goodness. It's gorgeous. Now, that is cleaned up afterwards with oven off. Yep. Actually, that's what works best. But I ran out of oven off, so I used soap and some uh, manpower. 
with a sponge. The oh, sponge no smelt really bad. It did. I think it's just been sitting in that sink for a long time. Gross. Gross. And that's how you set it up. There you go.